Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. It looks like uh, WWE is really going all in on turning Survivor Series into the new bragging rights uh, pay-per-view. Pretty much everything on the show is going to be Raw versus SmackDown besides for Brock versus Goldberg. Um, I, I guess you can say that Brock belongs to Monday Night Raw because they drafted him. Because, But he's almost like that guy that just can do whatever the fuck he wants almost like the rock and stone cold um you know there was other guys that just sort of jumped back and forth um kurt angle was a uh, a raw superstar that when uh, i believe it was batista got injured he just jumped over to smackdown won a battle royal and became the new world champion um the the storyline was they just created a loophole say, saying that basically um in his contract, it said whenever he had a chance uh, for a title shot, he was able to switch brands whenever he needed to. And that's all that needed to be said, even though he was the, the trying to be the biggest heel in the world going up against John Cena on Monday Night Raw. And then on SmackDown, he just comes out and he's Mr. America Babyface. Cheer for me. Um, <laughs> it, it worked for him. Hook, line, and sinker. But... Um, the new challenge that was made, of course, we know, as everybody knows, you have the five-on-five -five women's match, you have the five-on-five men's match. Um, those matches are coming together, as well as you have the five-team, um, well, it gets to be a ten-team um, elimination uh, match as well. Um, but on SmackDown, we had Dolph Ziggler uh, all pumped up from winning a match and then made an open challenge, not to anybody on the SmackDown brand, but to the Monday Night Raw brand, basically saying that anybody that wants a shot for Monday Night Raw at his Intercontinental title, step right up to the plate. I, I'm guessing this is sort of like an open challenge that we're not going to find out who it's going to be. Sort of like a surprise until actual Survivor Series. And my mind, I honestly went to the Raw roster and I started flipping through mid-card heels. Um, that would be a good person to challenge. And the first person I thought of was Rusev because it looks like that he's not going to be a part of the Raw team. And I said, well, this guy used to be the United States champion. It would make a lot of sense. He just goes and, and tries to, to beat Dolph. Um, I, I don't think he's going to win because I don't think they're going to take the title and bring it to Raw. But... Um, you never know what could happen, and here he is. He's just lost a, a, a major feud to Roman Reigns for the United States Championship, and now here he is losing a match to, to Dolph, who's not even on the same show. But then immediately I went to trying to figure out what, what is going on between Daniel Bryan and The Miz. Um, you know, in, in the back of my mind, I keep hoping, honestly hoping, I, I don't think it's going to happen, but... That Miz is going to be the guy that basically brings Daniel Bryan out of retirement. He is the GM of SmackDown, but yet Miz is always pushing him to the limit. Um, you know, they had their exchange on uh, Talking Smack, um, which honestly, I believe was on its first episode, but... It was the one thing that created the most buzz for that show that sort of turned it into the must-see thing for SmackDown to the point where now uh, WWE has announced they're going to start um, taping a new Cruiserweight show once SmackDown ends, which is going to push Talking Smack back an hour on the network, and people are upset that the, that the show is going to be on later and not on right after SmackDown anymore. Um, but, you know, some people like think that Daniel Bryan's going to fight The Miz. But I think that, honestly, they're just trying to play off of the storyline and get as much out of it as possible. Of course, the first thing that... Um the first thing that came out newsworthy was basically that um, the Miz and Daniel Bryan weren't going to be allowed to do anything on television anymore. That came from Daniel Bryan's mouth on a media interview uh, when people kept asking, you know, was he going to be coming out of retirement? Um, I, I don't know if that was just sort of like a knee-jerk reaction of I don't know what to do. You know, we've all known this story from Brock Lesnar and Stone Cold Steve Austin um, when they did their podcast. No, it was Paul Heyman and Steve Austin, where they hyped up a match, and Vince overreacted, and um, basically was mad at both of these guys, Vince had heat with them, because they were sort of telling the WWE Universe that they were promoting a match that Vince McMahon can't deliver, because Stone, Stone Cold Steve Austin will, we saw him go out there and, and make a WrestleMania appearance where he hit a couple stunners and um, you know dr drank a couple beers, but he's not going to actually wrestle a real match ever again. Um, for WWE, and um, 
you know, Vince doesn't like to hint to people or, you know, sort of make people think that something's going to happen when there's no chance it's ever going to do it. So, you know, that's sort of the first thing they said was that Daniel Bryan and The Miz weren't going to be able to do anything on TV anymore. They were going to keep them separated. And then that lasted a week and they were right back at it to the point where, you know, The Miz was asking Daniel Bryan to be on Team SmackDown. Daniel Bryan was, you know, going back to the thing of basically saying that he's not, um, a prideful wrestler. He fights like he's scared. Um, and Daniel Bryan doesn't have respect for him and doesn't want him on his team's brand. And to me, I could see The Miz jumping to Monday Night Raw, answering the open challenge, seeing how, honestly, since No Mercy, I don't believe in a singles match, The Miz has got a rematch against Dolph Ziggler. And that would be a way to do it, is for him to go to Stephanie and, and uh, Mick Foley, um, ask for them to find a way to bring him to Raw. I don't know if it's just, you know, they just did the storyline where Daniel Bryan, uh, uh, you know, re-upped his contract. They they went through and they um, renegotiated it. I don't know if maybe they're, they're just going to take the easy way out and say that Daniel Bryan slipped a, um, a clause in there, basically saying that he could be released at any time, much like a uh, NFL contract. Um, or something like that, or maybe he just, he just doesn't care, so he just releases them, but that wouldn't make much sense either, because, because Daniel Bryan wouldn't be surprised, so they need to come up with something, but honestly, in my mind, I think The Miz is the guy that is going to answer Dolph Ziggler's open challenge, seeing how he hasn't got a rematch, he's not going to be on the, on the five-on-five, um, you know, SmackDown team, it's not going to be like, uh, you know, SummerSlam 2010, where somebody gets injured, and they're begging him to join, and then at the last minute, he does it, and, you know, then they don't need him anymore, <laughs> and then Daniel Bryan comes out, um, so, um, he remembers that moment, that was pretty fucking cool, um, but we'll see what goes down, Survivor Series is still a little bit away, but they're hyping it up, new bragging rights, peace out everybody.